Everybody, it's me, Friendly Neighborhood Uncle Pete, and this is my series, Nails in a Coffin, where we learn that with great kills, that must also come great nails. Firstly, I really want to thank my good friend, Boris Solomon, for making that brand new intro for me. I asked him, hey, can you write me an intro for my Nails in a Coffin series? And he came up with that. I love it. I think it sounds fantastic. Perfect fit for my channel. I'll put a link down to his channel in the description and down below, and let me know what you think of that new intro. Well, we're more than halfway through the Puppet Master franchise this week, and we're nailing Puppet Master Access Rising, which is a direct sequel to Access of Evil. Here's a look at the average nails in a coffin for all the movies I've covered so far. And you can see Cursor Puppet Master still has the lowest average with one nail in the coffin, and Retro Puppet Master still has the highest average with 1.95 nails. If you've been watching my last few videos, you know that I have my new buddy Blade, but I think I may have a problem. He did take care of my Green Goblin um, issue for me, but I couldn't find him earlier, and I was looking around my house, and this is what I found. Yeah, he's, um, I may have to keep an eye on him so far, but let me know if you think I should really be worried about this. As I said, we are now in Puppet Master, Access Rising, direct sequel to Access of Evil. And this movie actually starts moments after the ending of Access of Evil in the same night. Ozu, who's recast from the previous movie, is walking down a dark alleyway with Tunneler and the bag that she stole. Blade is secretly following her. A car pulls up and the headlights shine on Ozu, Nazi Commandant Heinrich Mobius, and two of his guards get out of the car. There's some back and forth between Ozu and Mobius, and he tells her that if she hands over the bag, she can have her freedom. She hands the bag to one of the guards, and he kneels down to open it up. When he does so, Tunneler pops up with his drill spinning and drills right into the Nazi's forehead. Well, we're already at our first death in the movie. Big change from Axis of Evil, where the first kill wasn't for like 50 minutes. But I'm going to give this idiot one nail in the coffin. The guy chose to be in the position he was in, being a soldier for the SS. Not much else to say here. I just really can't see giving a Nazi soldier anything more than one nail in the coffin. But he just, just kind of looked into the bag and didn't expect anything else to be in it. I don't know. It was really weird. And stupid, and yeah, no matter how I look at it, I think his stupidity played him to his death. So, yeah, this uh, a hole soldier is going to get one nail in the coffin. Ozu thought the commandant would uh, let her go free in exchange for the bag, but like in a previous movie, there is no honor amongst thieves. After she turns over the bag, um, and if the first guard is killed, Heinrich Mobius tells Ozu that he is a man of his words, and he turns around to walk away. Closing the deal. Of course, he turns around and shoots Ozu, killing her. Um, I don't think this is going to be a surprise to anybody, but Ozu gets one nail in the coffin. In the previous movie, she planned on backstabbing the Nazis herself. So she was stupid to try and work with them to think that they, she can trust these idiots. And she was really stupid just for doing that. And when you're that stupid in a movie trying to trust Nazis and you're going to backstab them anyways just no matter how you look at it this woman was stupid in the position that she was in and she's going to rest with one nail in the coffin. We then jump to the following morning with the recast Danny and Beth. They're talking about how they can get Tunneler back and getting revenge on the Nazis and Ozu. Beth tells Danny that hey they're going to need some help. Well Blade shows up and he tells them that Ozu was killed and then the Nazis still have Tunneler. Before Danny and Beth can really figure out what their next step of the plan is, somebody knocks at the door. Danny and Beth open to go see who it is, and they're quickly captured by some men in suits. In a secret lab in Chinatown, Dr. Freuhofer is working for Mobius to develop a machine that can reanimate the dead. The, the seductive Utschi, uh, a Nazi, tries to motivate the doctor, only to be interrupted by Mobius. He demands a demonstration of the machine. The doctor tells Mobius that they don't have a test subject. Well, a short while later, Heinrich does bring in a man as a test subject. The man who only goes by Chinese man in the credits, he tells Mobius, hey, you can't hold me here. My friends are coming. I'm looking for me. Well, unfortunately for him, Mobius quickly does slit his throat. The doctor puts the man, uh, man's body in the machine and it brings him back for a moment. He steps out of the machine only for him to decay and fall down. The doctor does promise to fix the machine and Mobius reminds him that he doesn't. He's going to kill his daughter. And then he presents Tunneler to the doctor for him to study. I really don't want to call this person Chinese man, so I'm going to go by the actor's name, Glenn Zhang. 
and I'm going to give Glenn two nails in the coffin. He was being held captive by the Nazis. We don't see how he was taken. He didn't cower in fear in front of the Nazis. He stood tall and said, hey, you can't do this to me. My friends are going to come looking for me. But he didn't stand much of a chance to survive. He was surrounded by armed guards. Um, I didn't see him do anything stupid that aided in him getting killed. He just wasn't given much of a chance to survive. And if you've been watching my channel for a little while, you know, if the victim really wasn't given much of a chance to survive, we go down the middle and give them two nails in the coffin. The men in suits that took Danny and Beth were the U.S. Army, and they were taken to a military base. Major Collins commends them on stopping the bombing of the weapons factory the previous day. He tells them that General Porter wants to give them an award for their service to the country. The Major knows that the Nazis are still out there and they're looking to kill Danny and Beth so to protect them he has Sergeant Stone assigned as their bodyguard. Now in the movie they call him a sergeant but he's wearing three up and three down which means he's a master sergeant in the army. That's the pay grade of E8. You would never call a master sergeant a sergeant. You would never be assigned a position as a bodyguard or be called, you know, a lower rank. You wouldn't call a senior chief a chief, a master chief a chief, and definitely never call a master sergeant just sergeant. I think they chose this uniform because, you know, all those stripes looked cool. But, yeah, as a veteran, and if you're a veteran, you probably know what um, how I feel about this. The military stuff in movies, yeah, it's just kind of a pet peeve for mine. Back at the doctor's lab, he's examining Tunneler, trying to find out how he works, looking at the inner workings of the puppet. Uschi enters the room and succeeds at seducing the doctor. But before things can get too spicy, Mobius enters the room, and he goes into a rage, since earlier he was kissing all over Uschi and her assets. Um, he doesn't want to kill the doctor since he needs a doctor to work on the resurrection machine. So feeling betrayed, he instead shoots Uschi right through the head. I'm going to award Uschi one nail in the coffin. From what I can tell, she's just a manipulator. All she cared about was getting what she wanted. Plus, she was trying to manipulate the doctor and a Nazi commandant. She should have known that would not turn out well if he found out. I'm not even 100% clear on her motivations at the end, but I just really can't give a Nazi more than one nail in the coffin because to me that's inherently stupid and I don't think you deserve anything more than one nail in the coffin. So let me know if you agree or disagree on that. But Uschi, one nail in the coffin. The doctor is very uh, upset over Uschi's death and he's been experimenting with the serum that he pulled out of Tunneler. So he tries using some of that serum with his resurrection machine in an effort to resurrect Uschi. You would think he was trying to make Captain America the way this whole system works right here. But after the experiment, Uschi steps out of the chamber, but she quickly falls to the floor and starts to deteriorate. After that failed experiment, the doctor is updating Mobius on the progress with the resurrection machine. It still doesn't work correctly, and Mobius is losing his patience. The doctor does show Mobius the serum and how he can create puppets. He introduces his new creation to Mobius, Bombshell, a puppet with the likeness of Uschi. Mobius isn't too pleased since all he cares about is the resurrection machine, but, however, that is until he learns that Bombshell does have a machine gun for boobs. Danny, Beth, and Sergeant Stone go to Chinatown to search for the secret Nazi base. Danny finds the hideout, but while he's taking the puppets out of the bag, Beth is accosted by some Nazi guards and a fight ensues. All three were able to fight off the guards, but Bombshell does ambush them, shooting at them with her boob guns. Pinhead gets injured, and Danny, Beth, and Sergeant have to flee to save themselves. After the ambush, Bombshell goes back to the lab where the doctor introduces her to three new puppets. We got Wehrmacht, uh, a werewolf, Blitzkrieg, a tank, and Kamikaze, a walking bomb. Just like the last film, some of these puppets are really not in the best taste. Danny's at the awards ceremony while General Porter is giving him and Beth a medal for stopping the bombing of the manufacturing plant from the previous movie. The general gives a medal to Beth, but Danny doesn't want it. He feels the medal should go to a soldier, and all Danny wants is a fighting chance in the war, and I really, I do find that commendable. General Porter does tell Danny he'll see what he can do about letting him in the military, but during the photo op, the evil puppets attack, and Blitzkrieg kills a photographer when he gets shot in the back. This innocent photographer gets two nails in a coffin. He was shot in the back when he was taking a picture. There was no evidence of danger. He was surrounded by the actual military. And there was really nothing he could have done when the evil puppets started their attack. It was Blitzkrieg that actually fired first, coming out of nowhere. 
And, you know, all those rounds went into photographer's back. He wasn't given an opportunity really to do anything. And by the time he heard the gunfire, it was too late and he was shot. So the best I can do for this gentleman is give him two nails in the coffin. During the attack, Danny helped the general and Beth get to safety unharmed. Major Collins, he wasn't so lucky. He was ducking behind the podium to avoid the gunfire from Blitzkrieg. And he didn't see Bombshell approaching him from the side. And when he was crouched down, Bombshell did open fire with her boob guns and she shot the Major to death. I'm going to award the Major one and a half nails in the coffin. You know, watching the scene a few times, it looks like Major was standing. He didn't have a time or opportunity to get out of the room and get to safety. And when Blitzkrieg stopped shooting, the Major thought the close was clear. He didn't see Bombshell standing by him and this pretty much just cost him his life. I was between one and two nails on this kill since supposedly he had to have military training. He was a major. Granted, he didn't have a weapon on him. I mean, it was an award ceremony, so I'll give him that. He took cover where he could. I mean, if he was a civilian, he surely would have received two nails in a coffin. But since he was in the military, I think he should have been more aware of his surroundings. And I expected just a little bit more out of him since he was a military member. So I'm going to award him one and a half nails in the coffin. During this attack, when Blitzkrieg was shooting up the place, the Toulon puppets tried to fight off these excess puppets. Leechwoman and Bombshell were wrestling with each other. Blade and Wormock were squaring off, and Pinhead had jumped on top of Blitzkrieg, while Kamikaze was just running around threatening to explode himself. The Axis puppets did defeat the Toulon puppets. Bombshell knocked Leechwoman off of her. Wormock was able to knock Blade off of him, and Blitzkrieg was able to zap Pinhead. The Toulon puppets were defeated and they had to retreat. Later on that night, we see two Nazi guards standing outside of a building on their post. Danny, Beth, and Sergeant Stone and the puppets, you know, slowly approach. Sergeant Stone and the puppets attack. Stone knocks out one guard after punching him. Blade attacks the second one by stabbing him in the leg. He falls to the ground and then when we then see Blade's blade in the man's forehead and his mouth is open screaming as leech woman vomits up a leech into his mouth killing him i want to give this guard one nail in the coffin you know these guards sucked as centuries you know if you have two people at a post one can make rounds instead of two guys just standing there looking at each other sergeant stone was easily able to knock one out and the other guy was stabbed in the leg and then we saw the blade in his forehead but he still had his mouth open screaming granted he had a knife in his brain but I'm assuming he could still have moved his arms or something or try to get up. Or for crying out loud, even close your mouth when you see Leech Woman trying to vomit up something into your mouth. These guards sucked. They were both stupid and they both earned themselves. Well, the one guy that guy died is going to get one nail in the coffin. Danny, Beth, and Sergeant Stone enter the secret Nazi hideout. And they're searching around and they find Tunneler and they collect him up and put him in a bag. As they're doing so, another Nazi guard enters the room. The guard says, you there. Well, and they're all standing there. Well, guess what? Danny pulls out Stone's service revolver and he shoots the guard dead. This guy, guess what? I think you know, one nail in the coffin. You know, he found shooters in the hideout and he did challenge them, but he never moved after confronting them. He just waited and said, you there. He didn't say, stop, don't move, who are you? He was looking right at them and never moved until he was shot. He had a weapon on him, and you would think that he didn't know that he had a fire on, on him. Because he just stood there. Plain and simple with this one. He was stupid, and he just stood there while he got shot. One down in the coffin. After Danny kills the guard, Mobius and the doctor enter the room. And they all exchange some words, and Sergeant Stone is actually about to suit, shoot Mobius. But Blitzkrieg shoots a gun out of his hands, and there's a big fight between the puppets and Stone and Mobius. This time, the puppets do get the Toulon puppets, I should say, get the upper hand. We see Six Shooter all dressed in black, and he helps fight off the Access puppets. During the fight with Mobius, Sergeant Stone is stabbed in the gut, and he succumbs to his wounds and dies in Danny's arms. Now, he wasn't the best soldier, but Sergeant Stone did earn himself two and a half nails in a coffin. You know, he fought, which is more than I can say for most of the people in his entire franchise. He may not have been the smartest, but at least he wasn't a coward. He was brave, and I would have given him more nails, but he did lunge at Mobius, and that led to him being stabbed. You know, most of the deaths in the past 10 movies, the victim didn't even try, And but I do have to give credit to Sergeant Stone for trying and fighting. He was close to three nails in a coffin for fighting off Mobius, he didn't expect to get stabbed. Like I said, he wasn't the best soldier, but he was brave enough to earn himself two and a half nails in the coffin. 
After Moby's killed Sergeant Stone, he thinks he he already won. But Six Shooter opens fire on him and fills him full of lead with a lot of CGI blood splatter. Um, Mobius is wounded on the floor and Danny is standing over him. Mobius pulls out his service weapon and points it at Danny. And he's monologuing because he's a villain in a horror movie. But Blade walks up behind him and stabs him in the neck. The Doctor then enters the room again and he pretty much betrayed Mobius who's clinging on to his worthless life. The Doctor tells Kamikaze that it's time. Danny, Beth, and the Doctor run out of the building with the puppets as Kamikaze detonates himself, blowing up himself, Mobius, and destroying the lab. The final death in Puppet Master X accessorizing was Heinrich Mobius, and he earned himself one nail in the coffin. Um, he fell into the trap most villains fall into, the pointless monologue. He was clinging on to life, and he had his gun pointed at Danny, but he wanted to waste time with nonsense. Um, this gave Danny the time to tell Mobius, hey, don't screw with America, which I kind of like that message. And this is when Blade stabbed him in the neck because he was distracted. He was then betrayed by the Doctor since he threatened the Doctor's family. Another stupid villain in his franchise, earning himself a solid and deserved one nail in the coffin. Beth does convince Danny to let the Doctor go free, and he walks off into the night. Danny and Beth are celebrating with a kiss. We then see the Doctor stop, pull out a bottle of reagent, well, it's really the puppet serum, but it looks like reagent. He pulls it out of his pocket and he walks off into the night. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. Those are all my nails in a coffin for Puppet Master X Access Rising. Here's a summary of all the nails I've awarded. Here's a summary of the average nails in a coffin for the first 10 movies in the Puppet Master franchise. And you can see the Curse of the Puppet Master still has the lowest average, and Retro Puppet Master still holding the title for the highest average nails in the coffin. And the puppet MVP for this week goes to Six Shooter. He's the one who shot Mobius. He helped the Toulon puppets defeat the Access puppets. He saved the day. He wasn't in for the majority of the movie, but I do feel like Six Shooter stepped up when he was needed. Killed the evil Mobius. Like I said, he helped the other puppets defeat the Access puppets. So, for Puppet Master X Access Rising, the puppet MVP goes to Six Shooter. I will see you here next week when I cap off the Axis Trilogy with Puppet Master Axis Termination. Me and this uh, little guy are going to have to have a little talk about... What What are you holding in your thing? What is this? Um, yeah, I'm going to have to have a little talk with Blade. So, I will see you guys here next week. Say goodbye, Blade. Um, take care, everybody. I am your friendly neighborhood Uncle Pete. And remember... With great kills, there must also come great nails.